Hello everyone this is part 4 of what if Naruto was in high school DX with female Juubi, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Time skip, a couple of months. Kuo Academy, classroom. It has already been several weeks since Rias and Natsumi returned back to Kuo from their trip to Kyoto. The surrogate mother-daughter duo recently celebrated their first Christmas and New Year together. Luckily, the redhead didn't have to go home for the festivities as for obvious reasons the festivals weren't popular with the devils. Natsumi and Rias, themselves didn't particularly care about the festivals, but they did enjoy their time together, exploring the dressed-up town. Rias was currently in her classroom sitting at her desk, paying attention to the history lecture that was underway and taking notes at the same time. She was in her uniform, wearing the winter version of it, with full sleeves. If one were to observe her really carefully though, they would find that she wasn't exactly sitting on her chair. In fact, she was hovering just a couple of millimeters above the surface and if one had the senses for it, they could sense some kind of energy between her and the chair. After her training with her surrogate mother, she had been wearing the weighted wrist and ankle bands daily and as such couldn't exactly sit on a normal chair without breaking it. So, she was using her energy to form a small platform for her to sit on. It was a similar scenario for her desk. She couldn't rest her hands on the desk, so she was using her arm strength not to do so. Over the weeks, this had gotten so easier for the redhead that she didn't even look even slightly winded on having to constantly use her energy and strength. Though, it had been hard on the first few days having to constantly pay attention so as to not break school property. At home, it was all fine as her surrogate mother had strengthened the whole house using seals even before taking the redhead to the pocket dimension for training, having anticipated this. On her first school day after the training, Rias had accidentally destroyed her desk, having forgotten about the extra weight she was carrying around. It was thanks to her mind-altering magic that she got away without having to explain. And luckily for her, it happened when she was the only devil on school grounds. After that day, she took extra care while she was school or in the club. It was exhausting, but she could see the positive effects of the constant use of her energy had on her stamina and her reserves, so she never complained. Soon, the school bell rang signaling the end of the class and the school hours. Rias, along with everyone in the class, stood up in order to greet the teacher. Once the teacher had left, the redhead started packing her books. Once done, she picked up her bag and left the classroom, walking towards the infirmary, before she goes onto the old school building to carry on her work for the day. She passed by Akino on the hallway, who greeted her with a smile, see you at the club, Buku, which got a nod and smile from the redhead, yeah, see you there. It took a couple more minutes for her to reach the infirmary. Once outside the infirmary, she knocked on the door, then slid the door open having gotten a positive response from the other side and entered the room. Good evening, Ka-chan, Rias greeted her surrogate mother having closed the door behind her. Good evening Rias, Natsumi replied back from her seat behind her desk, how was your day? She asked the redhead. The blonde nurse was sporting her usual black knee-length pencil skirt along with a light blue full-sleeved button-up shirt. Her legs were covered by black stockings and black medium-heeled female office shoes adorned her feet. Her hair was tied up in a loose bun with two chest-length bangs framing her face like usual. And like usual, she didn't have any makeup on and her nurse's coat was hanging behind her chair along with a black blazer. It was not bad, Rias started. The two then continued to enjoy each other's company for some time, before Rias had to go to meet her peerage. A couple of hours later, with Natsumi. Having been done for the day, Natsumi packed up her belongings in her bag, threw her black blazer over her shoulders, slung the white coat over her left arm, picked up her bag and left the infirmary. She waved goodbye to the students she came across as she was walking through the hallways. She soon left the campus, exiting the school gates. But, this time, instead of going towards her home, she decided to visit the mall near the train station. Having left the school grounds relatively earlier than usual and Rias being busy with her devil-related work for another couple of hours, the blonde had decided to go look for something for the redhead. Rias' birthday was only a couple of months away, so the blonde wanted to look around for a gift. 
She hadn't decided yet what she wanted to give her surrogate daughter, hence she was going to the mall, a place with different kinds of shops. A short walk later, she had reached her destination. The first thing she decided to look for were some dresses for the redhead, so she entered a clothing store. It was one of the bigger and popular ones in the mall and as such had a very large collection. She skimmed through the dresses before one caught her eye. She took it out to take a proper look at it. It was an A-line frock dress with short sleeves. It was blue in color and had a red floral pattern all over the dress. The dress would be about knee length for Rias as per Natsumi's observation. It's the same blue as Rias' eyes she thought absent-mindedly. She took a mental note of the dress, but placed it back, deciding to look for more things. Worst case, she could recreate the dress. Looking through some other dresses, there was another that caught her eye. This one was a red and black checkered shirt dress, around the same size as the blue frock, but this one was full-sleeved. It had white buttons up front and an attached tie-up belt made from the same material as the dress. She memorized the pattern of this dress as well before placing it back and continued to look for other dresses. Though, nothing more caught her eye in the clothes shop. So, she decided to exit the shop and go into a jewelry store next. She looked through the jewelry in the cases. Most of them were too extravagant for an 18-year-old girl. She soon spotted one that she liked though. It was a simple necklace. It had a thin gold chain with a small teardrop-shaped pendant, about the same size as the width of her thumb. The pendant had a beautiful red sapphire crystal, slightly smaller than the pendant itself, as a decoration in the middle. Having made a mental note of that as well, she exited the store, nothing apart from the necklace catching her attention. Knowing her surrogate daughter's love for anime, she then decided to visit one of the stores that dealt in anime merchandise. She was looking through the shelves when she noticed a figurine of one of the main characters from Rhea's favorite anime, Son Goku from Dragon Ball Z. From the looks of it, it was also a limited edition figurine. She hasn't seen this particular one in her surrogate daughter's collection. Hence, she picked it up, deciding to buy it for her. The other things she could create if they got sold out, so she hadn't bought them then, but this is something she didn't want to cheat and create as she knew her daughter cared more for anime figurines than dresses or jewelry. She silently chuckled at the thought. She made her way through to the counter, placing the figurine on it signaling the shop manager to start the billing process. Can you please have this gift wrapped as well? She asked the guy behind the counter. Sure, I will have it wrapped in no time, the guy replied with a smile. After having the figurine wrapped and paying for it, she thanked him and exited the store, happy with her purchase. She put the figurine in her handbag and decided to head home now. What should I make for dinner tonight? She asked loudly to herself thinking about what to have for dinner. It her about 30 minutes to reach home. Once she entered her house, the first thing she did was make sure her red-haired daughter wasn't home yet. She then hid the gift she had purchased in her room in a storage seal inside her cupboard. Having done that, she took a quick bath before she started on dinner preparations having decided to make curry tonight. Time skip, one week. Uzumaki residence. Night time. Natsumi and Rias were having dinner at the table sitting opposite to each other as usual. Natsumi was sporting black leggings with a green tank top. Her hair was left loose. Rias on the other hand was in white shorts with a pink t-shirt. Her hair was left loose as well. She also had the black weighted wrist and ankle bands on her. The redhead seemed to be lost in thought though. Having noticed that, Natsumi decided to ask, Rias. She called getting no response in return. Rias. She tried again, a bit louder. The second call worked, she had the redhead's attention, is something bothering you? You seem to be lost in some thought, she continued, a bit worried. Um, Rias started, not sure if she should bring this up but ultimately decided to out with her thoughts, actually, yes, there is. She confessed. Her surrogate mother had always given good advice to her till now, so she decided to lay down her predicament before her. Natsumi simply gestured the redhead to go ahead, listening intently on her daughter's problem. You remember my knight Kiba Yuto? Rias asked the blonde. Uh, the blonde prince, right. Natsumi replied back, using the title the schoolgirls had given to the knight. Rias chuckled a little at how her surrogate mother remembers her night before getting serious again. You see, Kiba has been acting weird lately, the redhead started, he has been neglecting his duties, doesn't support us on missions and also seems a bit agitated, she finished. 
Natsumi sat back a bit. Did you ask anyone in your peerage if they know something? Yes, Rias responded. Issei said it all started after he showed Kiba a photo from his childhood of him, another boy and a sword that resembles one of the holy swords. Natsumi knew what it was. She remembered Rias telling her about how she met each of her peerage members. Kiba's story in particular had a resemblance to quite a few people she knew back in the elemental nations and hence, she had an easier time remembering that. So, that picture brought back his initial desire for revenge. Natsumi asked in a knowing manner getting a nod from the redhead in front of her. Seems like it. I am not exactly sure though, Rias admitted, I don't know how to approach him regarding the whole issue or how to help him. The redhead was sad, feeling helpless for not being able to ease one of her friends and subordinates. Natsumi pondered on the issue for a bit, before sighing. It was a similar situation to Sasuke's, though maybe not as extreme in some aspects and worse in the others. Unfortunately, I don't know the kid well enough to provide a useful advice, Natsumi started, getting Rias to deflate slightly looking down, but, what I can say is that, you should support him, Natsumi added, getting the redhead to look up at her in slight surprise, assure him that you are with him and will help him in whatever he desires, not only as his king but also as his friend. She finished. Rias nodded at her surrogate mother, but, you have always taught me against revenge, for the last couple of years, she questioned. Normally I don't condone revenge, the blonde responded, but, taking down this organization will save a lot of futures. So I would say go for it, she smiled slightly. Rias just nodded, okay, I will talk to him tomorrow. I hope he agrees to our help. If he doesn't, just beat the help into him, Natsumi replied back nonchalantly with a smirk. Now that sounds like you, Rias chuckled getting Natsumi to chuckle as well. The mood being lightened now, they finished the dinner before they both crashed on the couch to catch a movie before calling it a night. Next day, Uzumaki residence. Dinner time. Natsumi was in the kitchen preparing dinner for herself and her surrogate daughter. She was wearing red leggings along with a plain black t-shirt. Her hair was done up in a loose bun with two chest-length bangs left loose to frame her face. She was wearing an orange apron with the design of a red spiral in front of it. She looked up at the clock, a bit worryingly. It was already quite late and her red-haired surrogate daughter hadn't returned home. It wasn't the first time she was this late, but normally, when she was going to be late, she let the blonde know beforehand through a text or a call. That wasn't the case this time. Let's finish this up quickly and go look for her, Natsumi said to herself before she quickened her cooking pace, nodding to herself. She knew Rias was strong and could take care of herself and her peerage, hence she wasn't too concerned. But that didn't mean she wasn't worried at all. Having finished cooking dinner, Natsumi took off her apron, placing it on the counter and proceeded towards her to grab a jacket. Having picked up a black jacket from her cupboard, she proceeded towards the exit, put on her sneakers and exited her house, having already decided on her first destination, Kuo Academy's old school building. A few minutes later, Kuo Academy, with Rias. Rias and her peerage along with two extra girls were staring up at a flying man with ten black feathered wings. The flying man, who was hovering around 15 meters above the ground, had long black hair, red eyes and pointy ears. He possessed five pairs of black wings. He was wearing a black robe with detailed accessories. He had a spear in his hand which seemed to be made out of light. He was smiling arrogantly at the teens below him on the ground, quite confident of his victory. All of the people on the ground had seen better days. They had cuts and bruises scattered across their bodies, their school uniforms having cuts in various places. Apart from Rias and her peerage, there were two extra girls with them. One of them had violet eyes and long chestnut hair that was tied into twin tails, each held with a blue scrunchie. She was wearing the standard church battle attire which consisted of a black, skin-tight, short-sleeve leotard with pauldrons, matching fingerless gloves that extended to her biceps, and thigh-high boots, all of which were adorned with straps. The other girl had chin-length blue hair with a dyed green fringe on the right side and brown eyes. She was wearing a church battle suit similar to the other girl. She also had a crucifix around her neck. All of them, except Rias, seemed to be out of breath from the fight that had been going on, if their conditions and the condition of the school grounds and building was anything to go by. Issei, Rias glanced towards her pawn on her right, once you are done building up some energy, share them with the rest of the peerage, okay. She ordered the brown-haired teen. Yes, 
Buku, Issei replied obediently, concentrating on gathering energy into the green gem in his gauntlet. Irina-san, this time, Rias glanced towards the chestnut-haired girl who while batted like the rest of them was ready to restart the battle again, already holding her sword in a battle-ready stance, how are you and Zenobia-san holding up? She asked. We can go on for longer, it was the blue-haired girl, now identified as Zenobia who answered. She was also in a similar stance to Irina. Rias just nodded getting ready for another bout. Just behind her, her knight, Kiba, summoned a broadsword using his sacred gear, sword birth, and held it in a battle-ready stance. Beside the redhead, on her left, was her queen, Akino who started molding her energy, ready to strike the fallen angel with a magical blast of lightning. On Akino's left was her rook, Koneko, who was currently being healed by the healer of her peerage, her bishop, Asia. It's only a matter of time, foolish little bats, the ten-winged man started chuckling arrogantly being assured of his own victory, once I kill you all, I will have what I want. Then, we will make sure we take you down Kokobil, Rias replied backing, identifying the winged man as Kokobil, we won't let you start another war. How could things spiral out of control so quickly, Rias thought to herself. Flashback summary of the day. It had started like a normal day for her. She woke up, got ready, had breakfast with her surrogate mother before they left for school. Even at school everything seemed normal till she went to the old school building, or the occult research club as they called it, to continue on her devil duties of managing her territory. They had been visited by two members of the church, Irina and Zenevia, to let them know that they will be staying in Kuo to search for the fragments of the Holy Sword Excalibur which was stolen by one of the leaders of the fallen angels named Kokobil and they didn't want any kind of confrontation with the devils, since it was Rias' territory. Though, Zenevia did try to kill Asia for having been turned into a devil, resulting in a duel between Issei, Kiba, Irina and Zenevia. The exorcists proved stronger and quickly defeated her knight and pawn, before departing. In order to soak everything that had been relayed to her, Rias decided to take a shower before confronting Kiba regarding what she happened and what she discussed with her mother the day before. Before Rias had the chance to talk with Kiba and when she was in the shower, he along with Issei, Koneko and Sona's pawn went after the two church girls to offer to help in searching for the sword fragments. Rias and Akino went after them when she learned about what happened. When they met with the group in the outskirts of Kuo, they were confronted by Kokobil himself along with a scientist named Valpa Galile who had the appearance of a short, bespectacled elderly man with grey hair, a moustache, black eyes and wore a priest outfit. They somehow ended up at Kuo Academy, having chased the fallen angel and his aide who had revealed his plan to kill the devils of the academy in order to rile up the new satans into starting another great war. Sona and her peerage, the student council, erected and maintained a barrier around the school campus so as to minimize damage to the town, while Rias, her peerage and the two church girls tried to take down the fallen angel leader. Kokobil proceeded to reveal the fragments of the holy sword which the elderly scientist merged into a single sword before using it to attack the group from a distance. Kiba managed to destroy the merged sword as Valpa didn't have much technique in using the sword and Kokobil then took out grey-haired scientist killing him with one of his light swords. The group then tried to take out the fallen angel leader, but failed to do so till now. Current time. Rias was contemplating removing her wrist and ankle bands before they take on the black-winged man. After having sparred with her blonde mother during her training, she could easily see through the fallen angel's attacks, but the added weight resulted in her not being able to keep up. Her surrogate mother had stated clearly though, she shouldn't be taking those off unless her life was in danger and she didn't feel like that was the case till now. Sure, Kokobil was after her life, so as to enrage her brother into starting another war. But, she along with her peerage had been able to avoid any critical hits while working together to take the fallen angel down. But, it didn't seem like they will be able to take him down and her peerage had been losing stamina fast. She had to make a quick decision. Before she could ponder more though, Kokobil started again, this is the end for you, he brought the light spear above his head and reared his hand back, getting ready to throw the spear towards the red-haired devil, you lowly bats, he finished. And just as he was about to throw the spear, a voice interrupted him, how dare you insult my Rias Chan, you black-winged rooster. Everyone looked at the source of the voice who was revealed to be a blonde woman with hands on her hips and glaring up at the fallen angel as if to admonish the man for insulting her daughter. With Natsumi, a couple of minutes back. 
Natsumi was walking towards the academy in a brisk pace. She was just several hundred meters away when she sensed some kind of barrier around the school grounds. She increased her pace, now sprinting towards the school grounds. She activated her mangekyo and spread out her senses in order to get a feel of the situation. Once sensing the energy of her surrogate daughter, she sighed, releasing a breath of relief. Once, she was in viewing distance, she saw a barrier around the school. Once in front of the school, she muttered, Kamui, before she phased through the barrier and deactivating her dujutsu, noticing her daughter, her peerage, two unknown girls and a flying man with black wings who just insulted her daughter while trying to throw what looked to be a light spear in her direction. Current time. Ka Ka Chan. Rias stammered, not expecting her surrogate mother to be here. That went mostly unnoticed by everyone as they were too busy being shocked from the appearance of their sensei. Natsumi on the other hand heard the redhead, turned her attention to her and replied, I was getting worried, since it's already dinner time. So I came looking for you, she finished with a smile. Before anyone could say anything though, Issei started, good thing you are here sensei, getting the blonde nurse's attention, he, he pointed towards the flying man, is after us. Can you take care of him? He asked the blonde woman as if he was complaining about a student. This caused the two church girls even more surprise. From what they could tell, the blonde woman was only a normal human. Ha 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 ha, a human, take care of me, ha ha ha, Kokobil laughed arrogantly from his position. Natsumi looked up at the fallen angel and glared at him again, you insulted someone I love and now you are going to pay for it, you rooster. And you will make me pay. Kokobil shot back, still laughing at what he considered a joke. No, Natsumi started, getting surprised looks from everyone on the ground, my cute little Rias chan will do it, she finished before she turned to said redhead who was trying her best to fight back the blush of embarrassment that was coloring her cheeks having been called affectionately by her mother in front of her friends. Rias, Natsumi turned serious, causing Rias to do the same, her embarrassment forgotten for the time being, you have my permission to take those off weights as well as the limiter, nodding towards her daughter. This confused everyone even more, except Rias who knew what her mother meant and just nodded with a smirk. And make a spectacle out of it, Natsumi added with a smirk, getting a matching one from the redhead. Rias crouched down taking the ankle bands off, but still holding them. She then sprouted her wings from her back and began to float up. Everyone was looking at her as she climbed higher, a bit confused. They didn't think getting some weighted bands off was going to make much of a difference. No. Issei cried suddenly catching everyone off guard, why Buku? Why? Why the shorts? He cried comically, expecting to see the redhead's underwear when she started floating up but saw that she was wearing magenta colored shorts under her skirt, it was a perfect chance for me to see what kind of underwear you wear, he continued, getting everyone, except Natsumi and Rias, to sweat drop at his antics. Rias' eyebrow was twitching, not on his head, not on his head, she thought to herself, trying to stop herself from not dropping the weights on her pawn's head, lest he bleed to death from a head injury, provided, his head doesn't get crushed from the weight. Natsumi, on the other hand, was furious, Issei-kun, she began in a sickly sweet voice laced with some killing intent getting Issei to stop crying from the dread he was feeling, is something the matter? She asked smiling sweetly, too sweetly. Issei just shook his head, too afraid to look at his teacher's direction. Natsumi stopped the flow of her killing intent aimed at the brown-haired pervert and focused on Rias again, it's a good thing, I forced her to increase the length of her skirt slightly and wear shorts underneath, when the school converted to co-ed, she thought to herself, slightly proud of her judgment. Rias continued to climb higher and once she was on the same level as the fallen angel, she stopped. She then took off the wristbands while staring Kokobil in the eyes, tying them together along with the ankle bands and then dropped them straight down. The bands shook the ground slightly after hitting it and kicked up a lot of dust from the impact. Once the dust settled down, everyone could see that the bands were lying in a small crater in the ground. The impact got comical surprise reactions from everyone present, except Natsumi, who just laughed at their reactions. Rias too glanced at the reactions she got from her peerage and the fallen angel general. You were right, Nat-sensei, she chuckled, their reactions are hilarious. I know, right, Natsumi grinned back. She had asked Rias during her training to try to make a spectacle of taking off the weights as it would get funny reactions from everyone present. After all, the blonde still remembered the day that her fellow shinobi, 
Rockley, had taken his weights off at the Tunan exams and the reactions he got from everyone when those things dropped in the floor. How much do they weigh? It was Irina who asked first getting out of stupor first. Natsumi looked closely at the bands, specifically at the numbers displayed, before replying nonchalantly, around 12 tons. The peerages as well the church girl's jaws dropped again causing Natsumi to chuckle again. Kokobil, on the other hand, was now starting to get serious, knowing full well it was not going to be easy. Rias on the other hand brought her right hand over her chest where her heart would be. A red light shone brightly between her heart and chest before an overwhelming power started radiating from the redhead. Rias readied her trump card thinking back on how she developed it with the help of her surrogate mother. Flashback. Training year. Tenth month. It had been nine months since Natsumi had started training Rias. For these months, Natsumi had mainly concentrated on her physical prowess along with close combat skills while trying to increase her stamina and energy reserves. It was only in the last week that the blonde mother had started on the redhead's energy manipulation, after having increased her reserves to a point she deemed necessary. Natsumi didn't know exactly how magic functioned, but she could help the redhead in her raw energy manipulation. They were currently near the small boulder about a meter in diameter. There was a can of coke on top of it. Natsumi and Rias were in matching black tracksuits and hair tied in a braid. Rias had her black wrist and ankle bands on as well. Rias was standing in front of the boulder with her right hand extended but unable to reach the can while Natsumi was beside her overlooking her progress, trying to help her understand the concept. Don't think of it as a weapon Rias, she admonished the redhead lightly, who tried and failed again to do what the blonde was trying to teach her. Think of it as a part of your body and mold it into doing what you want your hands to do, she added. Rias again called forth her energy in an attempt to mold it again. Flashback end. Current time. Rias closed her eyes and called forth her power of destruction to envelope her from head to toe in a sort of protective, but destructive to others, crimson armor, Hamatsu no Yoroi, she whispered. The energy enveloping her was much more concentrated and dense, and as such more potent, than her usual attacks. I can only last about a minute using this. I need to finish this off quickly, Rias thought to herself. She had only trained for the last three months of her year-long training in development and use of this technique. The first months having been spent in increasing her reserves to even be able to hold the technique for a few seconds. Right now, she could hold the technique for a minute after which her reserves were completely depleted and she was vulnerable. That was the reason Natsumi had asked her to use the technique as a trump card, as a last resort, once everything else failed. Rias, Natsumi started, loud enough for everyone to hear, give him hell, she finished with a smirk, getting a matching one back from said redhead. The redhead leaned forward slightly and blasted off towards Kokobil, who barely had time to react before Rias was at him with a fist cocked back which she landed successfully on his face, launching the black-haired fallen angel into the ground. To the onlookers, except Natsumi, Rias had seemingly vanished and the next time she was visible, she was hovering where Kokobil initially was, while said fallen angel was sent to the ground. Did anyone see what just happened? Kiba asked the rest of the peerage getting a collective no from everyone. He was the fastest one out of all of them, well now second fastest and even he couldn't see. All the while, Natsumi, the only person there who was following the fight, watched it with a smile on her face, confident that her surrogate daughter could defeat the fallen angel. On the other side of the ground, Kokobil got up from where he had landed, spitting out some blood. His left cheek was slightly corroded from Rhea's power of destruction, while glaring up at the redhead, his light spear having dispersed in that small exchange. He created a broadsword out of his light energy and blasted off the ground towards the red-haired devil. Once in slashing range, he brought the light sword down on the redhead, slashing at her head. Rias dodged the attack towards by moving towards her right but was swiftly kicked away by the fallen angel who bit back a scream of his own, having his right foot slightly corroded away from Rias' energy. Rias stabilized herself mid-air having been launched some distance back from the kick and smirk looking at the condition of her opponent's foot. Before she could launch herself to attack again though, Kokobil morphed his sword back into a spear and launched the light attack at the redhead. When the spear was just several feet away from her, Rias raised her hand forward and extended her energy in the form of a big hand grabbing the spear mid-flight before in the same fluid motion, she twirled once launching the spear back at its originator at double the speed. Kokobil couldn't react in time and the spear sailed past his head, 
nicking his right cheek but cutting off two of his ten wings. Ah, he screamed in pain at having his wings cut off, but before he could calm himself down, Rias was upon him again. This time, she was slightly above him with her right leg raised straight up above her head. She brought the leg down on him, hitting him in the head with enough force to crack his skull and her energy armor corroding his forehead further adding to his injuries. The fallen angel was launched into the ground again. This time, it took him longer to get back up to his feet. Once on his feet, he created another broadsword with his light energy and launched himself at the red-haired devil. Seeing his approach, Rias extended her power of destruction from her right hand in the form of a blade, using the makeshift energy blade to block off the attack from the fallen angel. Kokobil continued to attack relentlessly, slashing at the redhead, trying to break her guard and cut the redhead down. Rias, on her part, managed to fend off the attacks though. She wasn't as good with blades as the fallen angel, but after having sparred with her surrogate mother, who was much stronger and quicker, she had developed her senses quite well. It was thanks to those senses and her superior strength and speed that she was able to parry the superior technique of the fallen angel. They continued to exchange strikes before Rhea's energy blade weakened for a moment from her having to maintain it for so long and the light sword broke past her defense landing on her right shoulder sending the redhead towards the ground from the impact. Rias managed to right herself midair and land on her feet on the ground. She glanced quickly at her shoulder, just to confirm that the light energy didn't leave any major damage and smiled slightly after seeing her shoulder was unscathed. Her power of destruction hadn't allowed the light energy to penetrate through. I don't have much time left, the redhead thought, now serious. She was running low on energy and was near her limit, I need to finish this off now, she finished her thoughts. Channeling some energy in her legs, she launched herself off the ground with even greater speed than she had displayed till now. Before the fallen angel knew what happened, she was above him, both her hands clasped together above her, which she then brought down on black-haired man, hammering him right on the same spot she had kicked him earlier, causing the crack in his skull to widen, sending him to the ground again. The black-haired fallen angel got up again though, with much difficulty this time, not wanting to give up. Once he got back on his feet, Rias was in front of him. She raised both her hands molding her power into two huge hands before grabbing the fallen angel with both of her energy hands. She put enough pressure using her energy so as crack some ribs while simultaneously using her destructive energy to corrode his body further making the him scream. She did slow down the corrosion enough so as to not disintegrate him completely. It only took a few more seconds for the fallen angel to pass out from the pain of slow disintegration and having cracked his ribs as well the bones in his arms. Rias let go of him once he had passed out and deactivated her energy armor. She was about to fall backward from having used almost all of her energy but was caught by someone. She looked up to see it was her surrogate mother who had caught her. Natsumi seeing her surrogate daughter about to fall quickly teleported to her location and had caught her. You did well, Natsumi whispered to the redhead with a soft smile while supporting her from behind. I was trained by the best, Rias replied back having stabilized herself getting the blonde to let go of her, that was close. I need to increase the time I can maintain the armor, she added more to herself but Natsumi heard it nonetheless. Don't worry, the blonde consoled the redhead, you have only started your training recently, you will grow stronger, she smiled knowing of her potential. Rias just smiled back at her surrogate mother. Rias Peerage along with Zenevia and Irina soon joined the surrogate mother-daughter duo. They looked down at the badly beaten fallen angel who had burn marks all over his body from Rias' power of destruction with the most of his clothes having been disintegrated, only leaving behind rags. He was also bleeding from his head and nose having taken a fierce kick earlier. His remaining wings were burned badly as well. He was somehow still alive though. Natsumi and Rias turned towards the group, Natsumi asking the two new additions, who are you two lovely young ladies supposed to be? My name is Irina Shidu, the chestnut-haired girl introduced herself bowing politely towards the elder blonde. And my name is Zenevia Quarter, the blue-haired girl answered, mimicking her partner, we are members of the Vatican, and we're here in town in search of fragments of a holy sword, which this guy, she gestured towards Cocobiel, had stolen, she finished. It is nice to meet you too. My name is Natsumi Uzumaki, the blonde nurse introduced herself with a smile, I am Kuo Academy's nurse, getting a confused nod from the two exorcists. Unlike the redhead's peerage, they were clueless as to how the blonde woman had managed to enter the barrier. 
Before anything else could be said though, they were interrupted by a male voice, I guess, we were too late. The group looked up to see two men hovering in the air with a hole in the barrier behind them, resulting in cracks all over it before it simply fell apart. The men hovered down slowly. One of them had 12 jet black feathered wings growing out of his back. He was a tall man appearing to be in his 20s with an average build, black hair, golden bangs and black goatee. He was wearing a v-neck maroon long coat with a wide, open high collar that opens up at the hem. The long coat featured two black belts around the waist and four black bands on each arm, two of the bands at the wrist and the other two near the elbow. He had grey slacks and brown shoes adorning his feet. The other guy was a handsome young man with light silver hair and hazel eyes. He was wearing a dark green v-neck shirt with a high-collared black leather jacket over it. He was also wearing burgundy jeans with a silver chain drooping down over them and black leather chaps with three bands encircling his right calf, and black shoes with black buckles. He had wings in the form of blue energy coming out of two white armor-like extensions from his shoulder back. Azazel-san. To the group's surprise, it was Issei who recognized one of the new visitors. You know of them, Issei. Rias asked her pawn to which Issei nodded pointing at the guy with 12 feathered wings, the one with the black wings, he is my most recent client. Natsumi was wary of the strangers. She could sense that the guys were strong, much stronger than the one Rias had just defeated and as such was ready to defend the group at a moment's notice. When the two guys landed, it was the black blonde haired guy who started, hello everyone. My name is Azazel. I am the leader of the Fallen Angels and this is my protege, he gestured to the silver-haired youngster beside him, Bali. Said protege just nodded in greeting. What is the leader of the Fallen Angels doing here in my territory? Rias asked cautiously. We were after this guy, he replied gesturing to the fallen figure of Cocoville, and it seems we didn't need to worry. You were able to take him down, he added. So, he is your subordinate. It was Natsumi who asked this time getting the attention of the Azazel for the first time. Azazel whistled to himself in his mind while berating himself on how he had missed to notice such a beauty. Maybe because she is a human among these devils and exorcists he thought though he wasn't surprised with her being there. There were quite a few devils who involved themselves with humans. Yes, he is. I am really sorry you had to trouble because of him, Azazel started, don't worry though, he will be severely punished. Bali, take the traitor, he ordered the silvered-haired young man who picked up the beaten body of Cocobile. He quickly changed subjects though, by the way, who are you, beautiful miss? He asked to the blonde woman with a slight perverted smile getting a groan from said blonde. Not that it's any of your business, but I am the, Natsumi started gesturing to Rias and her peerage, school nurse, Natsumi Uzumaki, she finished with a slight glare and in a tone that clearly said to back off. Azazel either didn't get the hidden message or chose to ignore it and focused his attention on her chest, continuing to ogle her breasts in front of her with a perverse smile on his face. Issei having already done that and paid the price for it, just shook his head, feeling sorry for the older man. Natsumi's eyebrow was twitching at having the displeasure to meet another shameless pervert in her life before a sickly sweet smile formed on her face and the resulting killing intent caused its recipient to look up at the blonde's face, sending shivers down Azazel's spine before she punched the bastard across the cheek sending him to the ground. And once he was down, she continued to kick the man multiple times getting everyone present to sweat drop. Azazel's protege, Vali, already aware of his master's antics, didn't even try to help him. Having vented out her anger, Natsumi stopped her assault and backed off. The Grigori leader got up as well, his face all swollen up and various bruises appearing on his body underneath his clothing. I will contact your brother regarding this, Gremori-san, he said in a serious manner to the redhead, pretending as if he wasn't just beaten mercilessly, who just nodded, and I apologize again. And apologies to you as well Uzumaki-san, he said before quickly storming off. The blonde might be the most beautiful and sexiest woman he saw since the Archangel Gabriel, but she was vicious and dangerous as well. I will contact Issei later for details on her, he thought perversely. He didn't dare to repeat what he did just now, but he could just look at the blonde goddess from afar, can't he? We will meet again, Red Dragon Emperor, Vali said to Issei before following suit after his master. Everyone looked at Issei for an explanation, Drake says he is the holder of the White Dragon Emperor, Albion, Issei simply said getting everyone to nod in slight astonishment. Who's Drake? asked Natsumi. 
he is the dragon sealed in Isai's sacred gear, Rias replied back getting Natsumi to nod. It was just then they were joined by the student council who rushed towards them after having their barrier destroyed. What happened? Sona Citri, the council president, asked her red-haired friend, we rushed here as soon as the barrier was destroyed. Sona was a young bespectacled woman with a slim figure, black hair styled in a short bob cut and violet eyes. She was dressed in a Kuo Academy girl's uniform. She had the rest of the peerage along with her. Natsumi recognized everyone as a part of the student council. There was Subaki Shinra, a young bespectacled woman with long straight black hair that extends all the way down to her knees, with split bangs and heterochromic eyes, with a violet left eye and a light brown right eye. In addition to wearing the Kuo Academy girls school uniform, she was wearing blue, semi-rimmed glasses with square lenses. Then there was Momo Hanakai, a young beautiful girl with white hair and blue-green eyes. She was also wearing a Kuo Academy girls school uniform. Then she recognized a twin braided girl as Kasaka Rea who had long brown hair and matching eyes. She was also wearing the school uniform with a blue headband. Then there was Tomo Meguri, who was a beautiful girl with shoulder length, reddish brown hair and brown eyes. Her hair featured swept bangs and a single strand of hair sticking out from the top. The sixth person was Subasa Yura, who was a tall girl with blue, shoulder length hair and matching eyes. She had the appearance of a tomboy with a bishunin face. The seventh person was Ruruko Nimura, a short girl with brown hair in long twin ponytails and green eyes. She was wearing a pair of green clips in her hair as well as striped green stockings. All the female members of the group were wearing the school's girls' uniform. The only boy in the group was Saji Genshiru, a young man with short blonde hair and grey eyes. He was wearing the Kuo Academy boys' school uniform, albeit without the blazer and his sleeves were rolled up. We just got a visit from the leader of the Fallen Angels. It was him who destroyed the barrier and took Kokobil away, Rias answered Sona's question getting a widening of eyes as a response from said girl. So, did he defeat Kokobil or Sensei here did? She asked further. She had already heard about Natsumi's exploit at Rias' engagement ceremony, so she wasn't really surprised about her being here. And she also knew about her strength. Actually Rias did, it was Natsumi who had replied, patting said redhead on the back slightly. Sona did not expect this however, nor did her peerage for that matter. You are not pulling my leg, are you? She asked just to be sure getting a shook of Natsumi's head and an indignant, oi, from the redhead. How? was her simple question. It was Rhea's peerage who answered her question this time, explaining the details of their fight or at least what they could follow. During and even after their recount of the fight, the entirety of Sona's peerage was surprised to say the least and didn't ask any further questions. If we are done here, let's go home, Rias chan Natsumi said getting a tired nod in return from the redhead. Can you handle the cleanup, Sona? I am too tired, she asked her friend. No worries. We can handle this, Sona smiled back. She could see the tiredness on not just Rias' face but on her whole peerage as well. Thanks, Rias smiled back apologetically having to leave the cleaning to the student council. Oh, we need to pick up the bands, Rias remembered suddenly and steered the group to where she had dropped the bands. Can I try picking them up? Issei asked curiously. He knew that Natsumi wasn't lying but he just wanted to confirm anyways. Knock yourself out, Natsumi replied before Rias could say anything. Issei crouched down, grabbed the bands and tried with his full might to pick them up but couldn't even budge them from their place. You weren't kidding sensei. These are freaking heavy, he said giving up after a while. Surprisingly, it was Koneko who tried next but couldn't lift them up entirely even with her rook enhanced strength and gave up eventually. Even Koneko couldn't pick him up, Akino commented in a surprised tone. Natsumi simply reached down channeling some chakra into the bands, deactivating the seals before picking them up and putting them in her pocket, getting a surprised look from her red-haired daughter, you can start again tomorrow. Tonight, just rest, Natsumi replied with a soft smile at her unasked question getting a smile in return as well. They left the campus soon after, leaving Sona and her peerage to use magic and repair the damage caused during the scuffle. Once outside the school gates, the group split into two, having to go different routes. Before they departed though, Rhea spoke up, Kiba, getting the blonde teenager's attention, as well as rest of the groups, how do you feel? Now that you were able to destroy part of the Excalibur, the redhead asked him. 
Kiba pondered on his feelings for a few seconds, the others waiting patiently for his answer. If I am being honest, he started, I feel much better, she finished with a smile, getting a smile in return from the rest of the devils and the older blonde. That's good to hear, Rhea smiled back, though, I would really appreciate it if you shared your thoughts and feelings with me the next time something is bothering you. Or even if you just feel like talking to someone, I am always here, not only as your king, but as your friend, she finished. I will book you, Kiba nodded back with the smile still in place. And, it goes for all of you, the redhead added looking at all the members of her peerage, even you, Irina-san, Zenevia-san. You guys helped us a lot today. I hope, we can be friends going forward. We appreciate your help today as well, Rhea-san. And I think I say for both of us, Irina started glancing at her partner and getting a nod from her, when I say that we would be glad to be your friends, she finished with a small smile. Oh and before I forget, Issei, Rias turned towards the brown-haired pervert, don't even think about using my words as an excuse to come to me with your perverted talks, she clarified. Issei deflated slightly, hi Buku, he replied, getting giggles and chuckles from everyone else. Okay, then, I will see most of you tomorrow then. Have a good night everyone and good work today, Rias waved at her peerage, let's head home, she said turning towards her surrogate mother beside her. Good night Buku, Rias-san, the peerage and the two exorcists chorused, waving at the surrogate mother daughter duo who waved them back, good night Natsumi-sensei, Natsumi-san. Rias and Natsumi went in one direction with the rest headed in the opposite direction before they split up further down the road. Natsumi and Rias were walking slowly towards their shared home. I am sorry, Ka-chan, Rias started getting the blonde's attention, I made you worry again. I should have called and let you know. Natsumi just smiled gently and put her hand on top of the Rias head and patted it gently ruffling her hair in the process, don't worry about that. I know you would have informed me if you had the chance. Rias smiled at having her head patted like that. She would never say it out loud but she liked it. And I got to watch you fight someone else for the first time. The blonde added having done patting the redhead, I will say it again, Musumi, you did well. I learned from the best, Ka-chan, Rias grinned back with the same answer as well. They both soon reached their home, where Natsumi asked the redhead to take a quick bath while she heated up the dinner. Once, Rias returned after taking a bath, wearing blue shorts and white tank top, the surrogate mother-daughter duo had dinner where Rias recounted back the day's events to the blonde mother. After finishing dinner and cleaning up the kitchen and dining table, they sat back on the couch to watch an anime movie that the redhead had selected. Before Rias could hit play though, Natsumi had a thought, I have something for you, she said turning towards the redhead, wait here. Before Rias could reply though, the blonde got up and headed straight towards her room. The redhead could only watch the retreating form of her surrogate mother in confusion before she disappeared in her room. Natsumi opened her cupboard and channeled a small amount of chakra into the storage seal drawn on the right hand side. There was a small puff of smoke and she was holding the gift she had bought last week. Natsumi then closed the cupboard and exited her room with the gift hidden behind her back. Rias was still looking at her surrogate mother with a confused look. As she walked towards the couch, the blonde took out the gift from behind her back and said, I was originally planning to give this to you on your birthday. But after seeing your progress today, I decided to give this to you now. This got the redhead excited. She liked presents, especially when it was something from people she liked. She handed Rias the gift and sat down, looking at the redhead's excited face with a fond smile. Rias unwrapped the shining red wrapper from the gift. Her eyes sparkled with happiness when she recognized the limited edition figurine of her favorite anime character, Son Goku in his latest mastered Ultra Instinct form posing as if firing his signature move, the Kamehameha. She squealed slightly and hugged her surrogate mother, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She repeated. Natsumi just chuckled at her kid-like excitement and returned the embrace. They soon broke off, why don't you go put that in your room and then we watch this movie, Natsumi said gesturing towards the TV. Rias nodded and hurried to her room. She unpacked the figurine and placed it on her study table besides another figurine of Son Goku with his hands raised and a spirit bomb-shaped lamp above. She then hurried back to the living room and joined the blonde mother on the couch for the movie. Though, Rias had fallen asleep soon after they started, too tired after her fight. She rested her head on Natsumi's shoulder and drifted off. 
Having noticed this, Natsumi switched off the TV, picked up the redhead like one picks up a baby and proceeded to Ria's room. Once there, she tucked her surrogate daughter in bed, kissed her on the forehead gently, whispering, good night, my little Rias, with a gentle smile and left the room, switching off the lights on her way out and silently closing the door behind her. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.